Let's now talk about the hypothalamus. We know that the hypothalamus will regulate the internal environment through the autonomic nervous system, or the ANS. So you can think of the hypothalamus as the boss, or the control center, of the ANS. Furthermore, the hypothalamus will link the nervous system and the endocrine system in three ways. So the first way is through humoral stimulation, and this involves the hypothalamus acting as an endocrine gland. Now, we have what are called neurosecretory cells, also called neuroendocrine cells, that at the end of the day are neurons. As far as naming the structures of the neuron, they apply to these neurosecretory or neuroendocrine cells, because once again, they are neurons. Except, rather than secreting neurotransmitters, they secrete hormones that are referred to as neurohormones. And the reason being is because these neurohormones will not be secreted into a synaptic cleft. They will end up in blood. So these neurosecretory cells are found within the hypothalamus. And they will produce hormones that will pass through axons that lead into the pituitary gland. Which part of the pituitary gland? The posterior pituitary gland, something that we're going to discuss later. So at the pituitary gland, we're going to find the terminal ends of these axons where they're going to store the hormones that these neurosecretory cells or neuroendocrine cells found in the hypothalamus produce, and they're released when needed. Examples of neurohormones are antidiuretic hormone, ADH, and oxytocin. And once again, these are examples of neurohormones produced by these neurosecretory cells found in the hypothalamus. So based on our discussion of the urinary system, if you recall, ADH, their target organ will be the kidneys, specifically the collecting duct and the late DCT. The oxytocin, as you'll see later, their target organs will be breast tissue and the uterus. The second way how the hypothalamus links the nervous system and the endocrine system is through hormonal stimulation. And it does so by secreting another set of neurohormones called regulatory hormones. And these regulatory hormones will control the endocrine cells that we find in the anterior pituitary. So what exactly are these regulatory hormones? Well, we have what are called hypothalamic releasing hormones, or RH, and hypothalamic inhibiting hormone, or IH. Now, remember this, anytime you hear or see releasing hormone or inhibiting hormone, I need you to automatically think these are hypothalamic hormones. In other words, these are hormones produced by the hypothalamus and only by the hypothalamus. So what exactly will these hypothalamic releasing hormones do as far as controlling the endocrine cells found in the anterior pituitary? Well, they're going to stimulate these endocrine cells. So if you see a plus symbol, this is the way I write out stimulates or stimulation. And if I use the negative symbol, that means inhibition or inhibits. So it inhibits the endocrine cells of the anterior pituitary to not secrete hormones. And so what I've done is just to make sure that it's very clear, here's my releasing hormone. It stimulates the anterior pituitary, specifically those endocrine cells found in the anterior pituitary. And now these cells will secrete hormones. And if the hypothalamus releases inhibiting hormone, then it does the complete opposite. It will inhibit the endocrine cells found in the anterior pituitary. Therefore, these cells will not secrete hormones. Once again, this is referred to as hormonal stimulation. The third way is that the hypothalamus will exert direct control over the endocrine cells of the adrenal gland, specifically the adrenal medulla. 
the inner core of the adrenal gland. And it does so by sending nerve action potentials. So rather than the regulatory hormones that controls the secretion of the endocrine cells in the anterior pituitary, it's through action potentials. So these cells found in the adrenal medulla, now that they're stimulated, they will release epinephrine and neuroepinephrine. And we refer to this as neural stimulation. So this is an image, once again, of how the hypothalamus links the nervous system and the endocrine system together. So we have the humoral stimulation, which once again involves the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary. So the neurosecretory cells or neuroendocrine cells found in the hypothalamus will release ADH, antidiuretic hormone, and oxytocin. Incidentally, this entire region, all of this that I'm highlighting in green, is the hypothalamus. The next way is through hormonal stimulation, and this is the relationship of the hypothalamus with the anterior pituitary, and it releases regulatory hormones that will control the activity of the endocrine cells found in the anterior pituitary. So if we look at the pituitary gland, here is the anterior lobe of the pituitary, or we could just simply say anterior pituitary, and here is the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland, or simply the posterior gland. So right here are these endocrine cells found in the anterior pituitary. Do we have these endocrine cells in the posterior pituitary? The answer is no. Once again, these endocrine cells are only found in the anterior pituitary. I'm stressing this for a reason. So we'll look at these two lobes that together make up the pituitary gland after this slide. The next way is through neural stimulation, and this is basically controlling the sympathetic division of the ANS. Remember that the hypothalamus, after all, is the so-called boss or control center of the ANS. And through action potential, these endocrine cells found in the adrenal medulla will release or secrete epinephrine and neuroepinephrine that will end up in blood. So remember, neuroepinephrine and epinephrine are not considered neurotransmitters because these will end up in blood. So let's now talk about the pituitary gland, which is also referred to as the hypophysis. So we have two lobes or two parts to the pituitary gland. We have the anterior pituitary or the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland, referred to as the adenohypophysis, and we have the posterior pituitary, also called the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And it's also referred to as the neurohypophysis. So before we get into the components or the further breakdown of these two lobes of the pituitary gland, which again is referred to as the hypophysis, let's look at my drawing on the top right-hand corner. So I have labeled here anterior and over here is posterior. But let's say I did not label anterior or posterior. How will you now identify the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary? What I would recommend is you look for a landmark or some type of point of reference that you can refer to so you know what's anterior versus posterior. And what I use is the optic chiasm, also referred to as the optic chiasma. And this is where the optic nerves will crisscross. Now we know that our eyeball is obviously facing anteriorly and the optic nerve is associated with our eyeball. So once you identify the optic chiasm or optic chiasma, now you know what's anterior and what's posterior. Therefore, here is the anterior pituitary and here is the posterior pituitary. So let's begin by looking at the posterior pituitary, also called the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And as I said in the previous slide, the posterior pituitary is an extension of the hypothalamus. So what I've done is I've inserted this particular image that I did not include in the lecture notes. And the reason being is because there's more details that I really don't need you to know. So let's first find the hypothalamus, which is gonna be in this region right here. So what happens 
is this hypothalamus will extend downward. And as it does, it will eventually form the posterior pituitary. So when I say that the posterior pituitary is an extension of the hypothalamus, it truly is. Now, what about the anterior pituitary? Unlike the posterior pituitary, which is an extension of the hypothalamus, this is not the case with the anterior pituitary. And the reason being is because the anterior pituitary develops separately from the hypothalamus. And that's shown in this image once again, and that would be the pink structures. As you can see, this anterior pituitary develops completely separate of the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary. And if we look down over here, and here, it's two separate structures. What I would also like you to notice is that if we look at this part and this part right here, and this is, of course, part of the anterior pituitary, once again, we're looking at the pink structures, it's literally gripping this area or the extension of the hypothalamus that we're gonna to refer to as the infundibulum, which I'll point out later. So now that you can see how the anterior pituitary is not associated with the hypothalamus as the posterior pituitary is, let's now look at the components of the anterior pituitary. So we're gonna begin with the pars tuberalis. So what I'll do is I'll highlight the pars tuberalis with my green highlighter. Okay, so we'll turn to my illustration once again on the top right hand corner. So what I'm highlighting right now in green is the pars tuberalis. And I like to refer to this, or I like to think of it as the hand of the anterior pituitary as it grips the extension of the hypothalamus that eventually leads into the posterior pituitary. So what exactly do we call that extension? We're gonna refer to that as the infundibulum, sometimes referred to as the pituitary stock. And what I'll do is I'll highlight it in orange. So right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the infundibulum. So this is the part of the hypothalamus that extends downward, leading us into the posterior pituitary. Another component of the anterior pituitary is the pars intermedia. So I'll stick to my blue highlighter, highlighting the pars intermedia, which is the second component of the anterior pituitary. Now, one thing I want to point out about the pars intermedia, depending upon which AMP book you look at or refer to, sometimes they will consider the pars intermedia as a completely separate structure, so much so that they do not include it as part of the anterior pituitary. For our purposes, we will. Okay, so we are considering the pars intermedia as part of the anterior pituitary. So before we move on to the pars distalis, I just want to quickly mention the pars tuberalis and the pars intermedia. Folks, we are not going to find any of those endocrine cells associated with the anterior pituitary. We're not going to find them in the pars tuberalis, nor are we going to find them in the pars intermedia. So these two components of the anterior pituitary do not secrete hormones. Well then, where would these endocrine cells be found? Well, they're gonna be found in the third component of the anterior pituitary called the pars distalis. So I'll highlight the pars distalis in yellow, and once again, this is where we're gonna find those hormone secreting cells called the endocrine cells found associated with the anterior pituitary. So for extra measure, I'm gonna go ahead and draw them in this area called the pars distalis. Now, what about the posterior pituitary? Well, the posterior pituitary has only one component and that's called the pars nervosa. So let's highlight the pars nervosa associated with the posterior pituitary. So this entire region right here, this is all pars nervosa, once again, part of the posterior pituitary. Given that there is only one component to the posterior pituitary, and that again, of course, is the pars nervosa, it's not uncommon to refer to the posterior pituitary as the pars nervosa. You may see that too, but remember, there's only one component to this posterior pituitary, and once again, that being the pars nervosa.
Now, are we going to find these endocrine cells in the pars nervosa? The answer is no. Well, what are we going to find in the pars nervosa then? Well, what we're going to find are the axons, the terminal ends of the neurosecretory cells found in the hypothalamus. So we'll look at that when we discuss the relationship between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary. But before we do that, we're going to first look at the hormonal stimulation, whereby the hypothalamus controls the secretion of these endocrine cells found in the anterior pituitary, where specifically, well, the pars distalis.